The Health Secretary Matt Hancock has warned that flexing lockdown rules could be fatal, urging everyone to adhere to restrictions aimed at bringing coronavirus infections under control. As hospitals continue to be under intense pressure, there is concern about public compliance with the rules. The Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, says the current ones may not be tough enough. Our first report is from our political correspondent, Ian Watson. Central London on a Sunday. Shops usually open, now shuttered. Streets eerily quiet. Government ministers say the early signs are more people are complying with this lockdown than the last one in England in November. But the data also shows that in some parts of the country, more people are on the move than during the first lockdown in March. So the government is making its message even more stark. Careless actions cost lives. The government rules only are one part of this. What really matters is what every single person does, because that's how the virus spreads. We can all do something to help, which is to stay at home, because every, sure. every time you try to flex the rules, that could be fatal. Okay, yeah. okay we're going to go all over on three. One, two, three. So is this the consequence of flexing the rules? The scenes in University College Hospital in London show the huge pressure the NHS is under in battling a new variant of the virus. And scientists who advise the government say that what may be needed isn't simply more compliance, but more restrictions. Whether the current restrictions are enough, uh, I think it remains to be seen. It will be a, a week or two before it becomes clear. Uh, that they may be sufficient, but, but uh, we have to be very vigilant. And if there's any sign that they're not, then we're going to have to be even strict, I'm afraid. The view from Downing Street is that the current measures are pretty harsh and they'd much rather encourage people to follow the rules rather than impose new restrictions. They say that in any case their options are quite limited. But the path of this pandemic has forced politicians to change course before. And a man who wants to occupy number 10 Downing Street says that the current restrictions may have to be tightened. They may not be tough enough, but in a sense I think the most important thing is for people to get that message about stay at home. The Labour leader says he now wants to summon the spirit of the first lockdown in March. Parliament agreed then to close some things which remain open now. So what would tougher restrictions look like? Well, I think there's a case for looking at nursery schools. We're talking to the scientists about it, but I think quite a lot of people are surprised that primary schools are closed and that nurseries that aren't closed. That sounds like a probably yes. I think they probably should be closed. Tonight at Westminster, the streets are calm, but activity in government is frantic. In the coming days, the medics and scientists, not just the politicians, will be telling us that following the rules will save lives. Ian Watson, BBC News. One of the highest infection areas, uh, infection, areas for infection rates in the country is in Surrey, where every hospital mortuary is now full and almost 200 bodies are being stored in a temporary morgue. Other local authorities have told the BBC they expect to open similar facilities soon. Our home editor Mark Easton and cameraman James Anderson were given access to the emergency Surrey site, located at a former military hospital. This is the cold conclusion of a pandemic out of control. An emergency body storage facility has been assembled in Woodland in Surrey. With hospital mortuaries almost overflowing, the county's dead are brought here. 20 more body bags unloaded today. To respect the dignity and sensitivities of the dead and their families, we're not showing the bodies, but I can tell you that in this fridge, there are around 50 body bags among 170 bodies currently stored here. These racks are expected to be full in just a few days. Around half the body bags stored here are marked COVID positive. Surrey now has one of the highest infection rates in the country. The numbers have increased dramatically and rapidly um, over the last two and a half weeks, you know, and that is causing us some concern. Um, and at present, there's no sign of that actually diminishing either. The message from the from guidance and from government is really clear, and I think we should be doing our, our utmost to, to uphold that. And this facility is sort of testament of, of where I think we're actually failing to do that at present. Fire and police officers have been drafted in to help, some brought back from retirement, until recently Kirsty was a detective on Surrey's murder squad. 
that it's been a dreadful year for everyone. However, working here, I can see that the numbers are increasing, not decreasing, and I would hate for the sake of people staying indoors rather than going out and meeting people, that their loved ones or they themselves were to end up here. That's exactly what we don't want. Surrey is struggling to cope with a raging pandemic that shows little sign of abating. Health officials worry the current restrictions are simply not enough to turn the tide. This lockdown doesn't look or feel like the one last spring. Some are urging the government to introduce a curfew but the Prime Minister's understood to regard that idea as unworkable and un-British. Just asking people whether they think the public's taking this lockdown seriously enough. I think there are shops open that aren't essential and also previously you couldn't have cleaners in your house and um, other tradesmen, which you are now, so I don't think this lockdown is as strict. I think people have got complacent over it, think it won't happen to me and they're just going about things as normal and like nothing's different. There are 845 spaces at Surrey's emergency body storage facility. Some fear that may not be enough. Mark Easton, BBC News, Surrey. Well, the latest government figures show that there were 54,940 new coronavirus infections recorded in the latest 24-hour period. That means the average number of new cases per day in the last week is now 59,853. Hospitals have had an average of 29,630 COVID-19 inpatients. Another 563 deaths have been recorded of people who died within 28 days of a positive COVID test. It's the first time in four days that figure has been below 1,000, but the numbers at the weekend are often lower because of delays in collecting the data. On average, there were 909 deaths announced every day in the last week. The total number of UK deaths is now 81,431. Today, the Health Secretary promised that by the autumn, every adult in the UK will have been offered a coronavirus vaccination. In England, new NHS centres are opening from tomorrow in London, Bristol, Manchester, Stevenage, Surrey, Birmingham and Newcastle. Our health correspondent Dominic Hughes has the details. This is our best hope of escaping the coronavirus pandemic. Mass vaccination on a scale the country has never seen before. At this centre in Stevenage, local NHS staff are among the first to receive the jab. Everybody's been struggling. Um, we, you, know, you, ne you never know whether you're going into work and what you're finding. So by having this, we just know that we can start to, to, to work together and build and really make a difference in, in terms of everyone that's out there and hopefully get out of this pandemic that we're in. I'm happy and excited that I got it because I know I'll be um, protecting not only myself but the people I work with. As well as the centre in Stevenage, this one in Manchester and five other hubs will start offering vaccinations this week. It marks a big acceleration in the vaccination programme and it's needed if the government's going to hit its mid-February target of offering the jab to 15 million people, including some of the most vulnerable and health and care workers. In Scotland, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine will be more widely available through a thousand GP practices and centres. Wales and Northern Ireland have each administered more than 70,000 vaccines. Long-term ambitions go further. An announcement this morning that all over 18s could receive the jab by autumn. But that seems a long way away, while a combination of soaring hospital admissions and staff sickness is creating a crisis that is entering uncharted territory. We're seeing uh, hospitals having to divert patients because they're too full, and that's having a knock-on effect on other hospitals who then also become uh, too full. Uh, and we're concerned that this will be a situation that could spread to other parts uh, of the country. So um, the situation is quite desperate. In a bid to break the transmission chain of the virus, this week we'll also see the start in England of regular rapid lateral flow testing for people who can't work from home. The tests deliver results in 30 minutes and aim to identify people who aren't showing any symptoms. But that's unlikely to ease the pressures the health service faces right now and will over the weeks to come. Dominic Hughes, BBC News.